Well, good morning and happy Sunday to you all. I still miss you and, and look forward to seeing you um, in Sunday school again sometime. This morning we're fi finishing up our study from the Proverbs, and, and I was thinking about wisdom, and I have to tell you, I pray for it a lot because um, it seems that I am in short supply of it more often than I would wish. So um, I'm going to ask you to think with me for a minute about wisdom and, and think about these, these questions. What's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Back in the days of Solomon, um, there might not have been such a distinction between knowledge and, and wisdom, but in our day today, they have come to mean something uh, quite different, whereas in the days of Solomon, uh, knowledge and wisdom were closely uh, synonymous with each other. So what's the difference between knowledge and wisdom? Also, what's the difference between understanding and wisdom? What's the difference between discernment and wisdom? I thought about how we might um, might address this, how we might talk about this, and and I've come up with what I know is an oversimplified example, but it still might help us to get a grasp of the dis differences between these, um, these terms and, and these notions. So here we go. Let's say I have to go get groceries, and I'm paying cash, paying with cash. And I have in my wallet a 20, two tens, a five, and three ones. And that's a total of $48. Well, you see, that's, that's simple knowledge. I know my money denominations, and I can add them up to get that total. Well, I'm off to the grocery store, and um, I understand that I can't spend more money than I, I have in my wallet for the groceries that I need. That's understanding. I have an understanding of that. So I get to the grocery store, I shop, I get my, the, my items in my cart, and I look and I see that I have mostly chips and cookies and candy and ice cream and pizza and drinks. So the question about what I have in my cart is, can I discern whether these are good choices for my family or not? Um, and, you know, I, I'm not saying that they're never a good choice. If I've got a 10-year-old at home who's got a birthday party coming up in the next day or so, they're good choices. Maybe, maybe they're good choices then. But um, if not, I have to discern whether I need to buy these things, whether I have other money to buy the real groceries that I need to feed my family. Um, and if I don't, can I discern a better course of action for my grocery shopping? Do I really need to keep chips and cookies and ice cream and pizza and drinks in my, my cart? So that's discernment. But if I have wisdom, I go even deeper than that. Not just this one experience, but the total of my experiences. Um, I might begin to think beyond this shopping trip. I might think, am I using my money wisely? There again, wisdom. Do I need to live within a budget? Am I saving for my 10-year-old's future? Am I able to pay my bills and put something aside? And let's not forget, have I counted the Lord? Am I able and willing to give to him and to his church? You see, wisdom takes us beyond just the present circumstances and causes us to think more deeply about the choices we make in our lives. And the goal of wisdom is to live a godly life for the Lord. So we're, we're finishing, finishing up our study on wisdom. We're in chapter 9. Uh, and verse 10 there, which is part of our scripture today, tells us the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So, we have to ask ourselves, do we have a healthy fear of the Lord? Do we think reverently about Him? Do we stand in awe of Him? 
do we honor him and try to obey him? Do we want to know him more and understand that his ways are not our ways and his ways are far better than our ways, even in circumstances when we can't possibly see how. When we're able to, to revere and fe fear the Lord in that way, that's the beginning of us getting the wisdom that we want. You see, having talked about knowledge, understanding, discernment, I believe that wisdom is the combination of those three things. Um, and in our lesson today, we see wisdom portrayed. Actually, in our lesson today, we see two ladies. Um, their uh, wisdom is portrayed as a lady, as lady wisdom. The other lady that we read about in our scripture today is known as Lady Folly. Um, and, and that being for a reason, because the opposite, the dead opposite of wisdom is folly or foolishness. This, this passage of scripture that we're reading today is the last poem in the first section of the Proverbs, and we're going to be reading verses 1 through 6, verses 8 through 10, and verses 13 through 18. And these verses are a study in contrast. We're looking at the difference between lady wisdom and lady folly. We're looking at the difference between wisdom and foolishness. And in these verses, we, we see three things. We see in each, in, for each lady, we see a description of each woman. We see her invitation to come and eat. And we see where accepting either invitation will lead us. So let's take a look at these verses now. And we're going to be reading verses 1 through 6, which tell us about Lady Wisdom. So if you have your Bibles... Grab those if you have your Sunday School materials um, for the uh, International Sunday School lesson. You can grab that. We're reading verses 1 through 6 of chapter 9, where we read this. Wisdom has built her house. Wisdom being la the lady wisdom. She has built her house. She has set up its seven pillars. She has prepared her meat and mixed her wine. She has also set her table. She has sent out her servants, and she calls from the highest point in the city. And that highest point in the city would have not necessarily been the highest building, but it would have been the highest place where you would attract the most people. And this is her invitation. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, come, eat my food and drink the wine I have mixed. Leave your simple ways and you will live. Walk in the way of insight. So here, Lady Wisdom has been described as a woman who has built a house, a good-sized house, a sturdy uh, house, one built on a strong foundation, a place where you would want to make your home, and if you were a guest, a place where you would want to be invited. And we also see that Lady Wisdom has prepared and she's made herself ready for this feast. And she has invited everyone within the sound of her voice and the voice of her servants who have gone out with the invitation to come and dine on a meal of good meat and fine wine. And I would imagine all the trimmings that go into making for a big feast. And she's issued an invitation, and the invitation is this. Come, you simple people. Now, you know, that strikes us as negative. Um, that could mean maybe ignorant, not having knowledge, uh, maybe even foolish, um, maybe those who lack wisdom, but they want it. Um, those who are confused about life and, and, and the meaning of life. Her invitation is to leave all this behind. I like how the Message Bible paraphrases this. It says this, Are you confused about life? You don't know what's going on? Come with me. Oh, come. Have dinner with me. Leave, leave your impoverished confusion and live. Walk up the street to a life with meaning. 
So Lady Wisdom's invitation is to come and dine and learn how to live a life of meaning, a life of wisdom, of life for the Lord. And in here, I told you that there'd be a description, there would be an invitation, and we'd learn where that it, accepting that invitation would lead you. Well, here's where it will lead you if you in, if you in, um, accept Lady Wisdom's invitation to, to come and dine with her. We read in verses 8 through 10, if you're following along. Do not rebuke mockers, or they will hate you. Rebuke the wise, and they will love you. Instruct the wise, and they will be wiser still. Teach the righteous, and they will add to their learning. And again, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. So in other words, this is what these, these verses mean. Don't waste your time on scoffers and mockers and those who are conceited and puffed up and think they already know it all. The point is this. If a person wants to be wise, they may be simple. They may be simple-minded. They may not have wisdom. They may at this point be foolish. But if they want to be wise, they will do a little self-examination and accept constructive criticism and correction. Um, in other words, they'll be willing to listen to the one who has wisdom teaching them how they might get wisdom. The person who wants wisdom will gain more and more knowledge and understanding and discernment, and the, the result will be wisdom. And they'll grow wiser and wiser. That's, that's I hope, you and me who, who want to be wise and live a life that is pleasing to the Lord. But as for those who think they already know it all, they think, what's the point? I already know it. I don't, I don't need to gain any more knowledge or uh, understanding or dis discernment. I'm already wise beyond that of anybody I know. So what's the point? And um, looking at verse 10, we've already talked about the fear of the Lord being the beginning of, of wisdom and uh, knowledge of the Holy One being understanding. And Lady Wisdom, as portrayed here, clearly has a reverent respect of God. So that's Lady Wisdom. Now let's take a look at Lady Folly and all her foolishness in verses 13 through 18. She also calls out an invitation, and we read here in those verses 13 through 18. Folly is an unruly woman. She is simple and knows nothing. She sits at the door of her house on a seat at the highest point of the city. Again, where she would gather uh, more, more uh, attention. She's calling out to those who pass by, who go straight on their way. Let all who are simple come to my house. To those who have no sense, she says, stolen water is sweet. Food, food eaten in secret is delicious. In other words, it's very tantalizing, very tempting. But little do they know that the dead are there, that her guests are deep in the realm of the dead. So in other words, folly is a stupid woman. Now, that sounds harsh to say that word, but that's really what it means. Folly is a stupid woman. It sounds harsh, but the truth often is harsh and hard for us to, to, under, to hear. Folly is loud. She's crude. She's rude. And, and looking again at the Message Bible, um, here's what it calls her. It calls her brazen, empty-headed, and frivolous. She sits on her front porch, kind of lackadaisical, I would imagine, not putting a lot of effort into it, just thinking she's so attractive, and she's calling out to people passing by, minding their own business, and she too says, are you confused about life? Then here's where it, accepting her invitation is. She says, then steal away with me, and I'll show you a good time. No one will ever know about it, and you'll have the time of your life. So, 
for those who go with Lady Folly, who give in to the temptation of what sounds wonderful, little do they know that um, Lady Folly's way is the way to hell. Little do they know that Lady Folly's closet is full of the skeletons of guests who have chosen to eat the secret temptations of, of, of sin. They have dined on the temptations of sin instead of the feast that Lady Wisdom has prepared. And Lady Folly's way leads to death and, and eternal damnation. So, the question for us is, we're, you know, we always want to know what our lesson means for us today. So, we have to ask our question, which lady do we want to associate with? Which banquet do we want to attend? Which feast do we want to enjoy? As I was preparing, a, 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 it doesn't tell us what Lady Folly has invited us to dine on. We, it does with Lady Wisdom, good meat, choice wine, mixed wine. Um, I imagined uh, Lady Folly's invitation um, to, to be something of a meal of fakes. Um, I thought about this, and I, I don't want to offend any of my tofu-eating friends, but I imagined that her meal might involve tofu and um, maybe some harder spirits and, and uh, things, foods less desirable for a meal. Um, when, when clearly, if we make the right choice, we will... Um, choose wisdom instead, instead and, ch and choose those fine um, meats and fine wine and, and the fine fruits of the way of wisdom. So if we choose that, if we choose wisdom, how do we get it? We already know the fear of the Lord and the knowledge of Him is the beginning of getting wisdom. Um, we, we get to know the Lord, and, and we have to if we, if we want wisdom. We want to if we desire wisdom. We get to know him by studying his word and listening to the counsel of the Holy Spirit that God has placed living in us. God has also placed wise spiritual people in our lives. We can take a look at them and how they live, and we can learn from them. In fact, that's how wisdom was gained in the ancient days, in Solomon's day. Wisdom was taught. It was modeled for people to see and to learn from. It was passed on from generation to generation. So it's encouraging to me to know that wisdom can be taught and wisdom can be learned. And we can do that today, but, be, but we have to begin by begetting wisdom. The Bible tells us in James 1, through 5, uh, 1, 5, chapter 1, verse 5, If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God, who gives generous, generously to all without finding fault, and it will be given to you. I love that. If I want wisdom, and I do ask for it every day, I have to ask for it. Um, in other words, to get wisdom, you have to want it, and you have to ask for it, and then you have to put it in practice, and you have to grow and, and grow more and more wise. And, you know, thinking about this world today, I'd say that there is a great lack of wisdom among, among people in the world today, people of all shapes and sizes and colors and races and nationalities and, yes, political persuasions. There is a great lack of wisdom among people in the world today, and, and we need to ask for the wisdom um, that we need to honor God, to respect Him, to be a living example so that wisdom may be taught and learned and passed on. So as we close today, um, I know this has been a short lesson, actually more of a devotion perhaps, but 
As we close today, let's spend our last minutes um, praying for that wisdom. So would you pray with me? Our most gracious and loving Lord, we thank you, Father, that you have once again given us a word that we can take learning from, that we can take knowledge from, that gives us a deeper understanding of you and helps us to combine all those together to become wise to become wise as you would have us, not, not according to the wisdom of the world, but according to the wisdom of you, the wisdom of your spirit and the wisdom of your way. We know, Lord, that in these times that we live in, just as in ancient times, wisdom is sometimes in short supply. We also know, Lord, that you have told us if we lack it, we just need to ask for it. We thank you, Lord, that you are so willing to, to share wisdom with us without uh, criticism, without negative judgment. And Lord, so that encourages us to ask for wisdom. And I pray that we would be encouraged. I pray that would, we would seek you. I pray that we would, in fact, be a living example of you in our world today. We know that it is so needed. And we just pray for the boldness to do that, Lord. I thank you, Lord, for all who are within the hearing of my voice. I pray that the lesson may be used to encourage us in the days ahead. And we thank you, Lord, for your loving, gracious kindness and mercy toward us. And we thank you most of all, Lord, for your, your son, Jesus Christ, who died so that we might gain. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.